I thank Dr. Juan Pablo Lievano for dubbing this video in English. Now, we will perform the closure of the wound in two layers. A deep layer with a continuous absorbable suture and a superficial layer with a suture called Greek guard or continuous U suture. The photograph shows the initial irregular wound and its debridement. We will start the practice closing the subcutaneous cellular tissue layer with a continuous suture. Begin with a horizontal bite about 8 millimeters away from one of the wound's vertex and point it towards the vertex of the wound. In the opposite border, insert the needle at the vertex to exit approximately at the same level as the first bite was introduced. Retrieve the needle and advance the suture. Now, proceed to do the knotting of the suture as it has been demonstrated in previous practices. Make three to four knots. Cut the distal end of the suture. Carry on doing a continuous suture on one side and the other as it was shown in the intradermal suture, but in this case, you will do it in the subcutaneous fatty tissue layer. After retrieving the needle, in order to insert the needle in the opposite side of the wound, remember to do so a few millimeters behind the spot where it came out in the previous bite. I'm using an absorbable polyglactin suture with a 4 O's gauge and a round body taper point needle. In an animal specimen, you can use any suture you have. Under clinical conditions, you can close this layer with interrupted stitches or a continuous suture. On many occasions, I prefer to close this layer with a continuous suture because that way fewer knots are left on the subcutaneous layer that could cause granulomas when they are close to the dermis. When you get to the other end of the wound, perform the knotting of the suture. Make three to four knots because it's a multi-filament. Now, Cut the two ends of the suture. The deep layer has been closed. In order to show the Greek guard suture, we will close the skin with this technique. It's a continuous U suture. Initially, perform a simple stitch. You can then make the knot or, as in this case, you can return the needle as a U and then perform the knotting of the suture. Be careful to enter the epidermis and continue in the layer of the epidermis parallel to the skin surface to obtain an adequate coping of the skin surface. The suture must exit through the dermis and enter again at the same height that it exited on the dermis on the opposite side of the wound, not the suture. I am using a monofilament of 5 O's gauge polypropylene with a cutting edged needle. That's why it's recommended to perform five surgical knots. Cut the distal end of the suture. Now, go on doing a continuous U suture, as indicated, entering through the epidermis, exiting through the dermis, and again entering the dermis and exiting through the epidermis, parallel to the skin surface. On this wound superior border, there is a slightly irregular edge that has been left after performing the debridement. We could debride it again or, as in this case, regularize it by performing the suture. Continue the Greek guard suture, or in a continuous U, throughout the wound. It's very important not to tighten the stitches so that they don't get marked on the skin. Simply. Apply enough tension so that the edges of the wound are completely faced. I insist on making the suture parallel to the surface of the skin in the path of the dermis, exiting and entering the dermis to achieve adequate coping. The Greek guard suture offers adequate skin eversion, symmetrical coping of the edges, and a fast advancement. This type of suture can be performed anywhere on the body, including the face, always with the right material. On the face, a 6 O's gauged monofilament 
with enough tension to face the edges of the wound, but not excessive so that the suture doesn't get marked. On the face, I prefer to perform simple interrupted stitches or a continuous intradermal suture, but this can be a resource to facilitate hemostasis. For example, on anticoagulated patients, by making a complete press of the entire dermis. When reaching the other end of the wound, pass the needle for the last time and leave a long loop of about two centimeters long that will serve to make the final knotting of the suture. In order to perform the knotting of the suture, do an initial double loop to ensure the tension of the suture and the coping of the wound edges. Continue knotting until completing five knots. Now cut the two edges of the suture. In order to remove the suture, cut the knot on one of the suture edges. Then remove the other knot. You may do so using a scalpel or scissors. And once you have removed the knots, pull the suture from the center. Thank you.